Al, Labor Day, and uh, once again, uh, this game means something. Yeah, and again, you know, going back to the game in, uh, in July against the Eskimos, it's really good to see that the Battle of Alberta means something. But really, such a stark contrast to where we were at uh, five or six weeks ago when the Eskimos last visited McMahon Stadium. That was a team that was unbeaten at the time, doing everything right. The Stampeders, on the other hand, obviously were kind of in the midst of a, of a slow start to the season. And here we are now, uh, like I said, about six weeks later, and uh, two teams that are again going in different directions. Eskimos have lost three in a row, the Stampeders have won four in a row, and uh, and really, uh, on paper right now, based on the way the two teams are, are playing, uh, the Stampeders are in very good position to open up the, the home and home with a, with a victory. And the Stamps are finally looking good at home after dropping some early games uh, here at McMahon. What are you looking forward to in the Labor Day Classic? Well, again, you know, the offense has been the story of the last four weeks. They've been playing at a very high level, particularly the passing game. And Henry Burris, uh, 133 passes in a row without an interception. That's pretty impressive stuff in itself. The receiving core that's working with them, particularly Nick Lewis and Johnny Frizzani of late. Uh, Johnny Frizzani, of course, named the Canadian Player of the Month uh, earlier this week. So all those things are pointing in a good direction. I guess the only issue is when will we see that running game uh, get off tra get on track because Joffrey Reynolds, uh, John Cornish, neither one has really stood out. And that's despite the fact that the Stampeders still do have the fourth best uh, rushing offense in the CFL, but nobody would say it's been an impressive performance by the running game. Last game, Cornish and uh, Reynolds, I think, 30 yards or something like that? On I think the they were in the fi uh, low 50s, yeah. maybe, uh, yeah, thereabouts. Uh, Again, just not dictating things the way they're used to. And, and the Stampeders continue to say the right things, that you know defenses are really crowding into the box to take that aspect of the, of the running game away from them. But at some point, that running game's got to step up. Well, it's going to get cold, and we're going to play some games in November, hopefully, and you're going to want your running game going at that time. Un undoubtedly. I mean, you protect the football better, you kill the clock better, uh, you take uh, the elements out of, the, out of, out of play with, uh, from, that tend to affect the passing game. So... You know, it's all well and good that the Stampeders have won four in a row, but, you know, to have long-term success, and they're, they're aware of this, they need that running game to be effective. We haven't talked about it much this year, but should we be keeping an eye on the kicking game? Well, you know, Rene Paradis has been a real nice story all year, and, uh, and he continues to be a good story. He, of course, took over for the injured Rob Maver after week one, and, uh, you know, basically he's got two games left on his tryout, uh, the two uh, games against the Eskimos that are coming up here. And then it's decision day for the Stampeders. Rene Paradis has done his part, obviously. He's been good, solid, uh, reliable. 16 of 21 of field, goal, field goals coming into this game. Obviously made the 50-yarder against BC. A 46-yarder in the fourth quarter last week against Montreal. But Rob Maver is healthy, and he's eager and itching to get out back there on the field. And, you know, the Stampeders are going to have a tough decision. There's no question about it. And to his credit, Rene Paradis is making that decision even tougher.